getting answers from all across Northern California. This is the CBS 13 News at 10, and it starts with breaking news. And we start tonight with breaking news out of Sacramento County, where the sheriff's office says a suspect has been shot by officers. Let's get right to CBS 13's Heather Jansen. She's live for us in Rancho Cordova, where it happened. Heather, what are you learning tonight? Hey, Marissa, still very much a heavy police presence out here. I want to get straight to the scene and show you what we can see. We're a little far out, but what we know, there's still so much to be learned. But we do know that the Sacramento County Sheriff's Office says a suspect was pointing a gun at officers, which led them to shoot this person. Now, the suspect was transported to a nearby hospital to be treated, but no word yet on what their condition may be at this hour. But we are told all officers are okay. Again, still a very heavy police presence. We are pretty far out and are unable to really see uh, a lot of the details uh, up close. We're just uh, a few blocks out and we're working to learn more as soon as we have that. We'll bring that to you right here. Marissa. Heather, thank you. Just off of Mountain, uh, near Mountain Mike's off of Folsom Boulevard and Investment Circle. We'll keep tabs on this throughout the evening. Heather, thank you. Well, now to this baking heat, people are getting scorched up and down the state. The hottest spot in our region today, Fairfield, a high of 106 degrees, and the heat only going to get worse. Let's bring in Jordan Segundo now, who's tracking triple digit temperatures and the likelihood of records being broken this weekend, Jordan. That's right. Good evening, Marissa. Now, it was a very hot day today. We didn't have to tell you that. You just felt it if you stepped outside. And like Marissa said, 106 out in Fairfield. We saw 101 here in Sacramento, 105 out in Stockton. We saw triple digits up in the foothills as well. Then low 90s for both Truckee and South Lake Tahoe. We didn't set any records today. Our record's closer to about 105, but we'll definitely be breaking some tomorrow. Tonight, though, still very warm. We're at uh, mid 80s right now in uh, Modesto, 81 in Sacramento. And we're looking at still at the low to mid 80s up in the foothills. So it's going to be a warm night tonight. Unfortunately, no Delta breeze to cool things off. So as we head into the overnight hours, take a look at these numbers. It's only going to warm down into the low 70s here in Sacramento at 73 degrees. And we'll start tomorrow morning with temperatures already getting into the low 80s by 9 a.m. So it is going to be a hot day tomorrow. And as far as records being broken, well, let's take a look at some of those numbers. Sacramento, Stockton, Modesto, there are those highs. You can see 105 for Sacramento, Stockton, and 103 out in Modesto. We'll not likely break those records because we're forecast to get up to 100. Oops, oh, skipped a bit. 111 in Sacramento, not far behind there in Stockton. They're looking at 109, 108 on Sunday. And again, if we hit 111 here in Sacramento, that could be the all time high for the month of September, which is actually 109 degrees. So we're talking hot, hot, hot. Coming up though, in your seven day forecast, we'll take a look at uh, when things will finally cool down. And plus, we're tracking now fire weather concerns as winds expected to pick up on Monday. Marissa? Hot is the word of the mm -hmm. weekend, Jordan. Thank you. Well, no shutoffs tonight, but Cal ISO warned our state's power grid was reaching towards the max today, and power companies may have to cut customers off in the coming days. Heather Jansen tracking that for us today. Our state produces more than most countries do, so like, why we have to deal with this? And we're not a third world country, is beyond me. Strong words from Sean Arend from West Sacramento ticked at the threat of another round of rolling blackouts. He says he does his part to conserve, but from the state, he wants to see more. Our state government's really dropped the ball. Seems like it's a perpetual situation that we, for some reason, as a state, can't solve. Cal ISO says triple digits, high loads, and fires all causing the state to lose thousands of megawatts Saturday night, putting pressure on the grid and ready for rotating outages if necessary, even after a recent order from the governor designed to free up more power. Because we're old. When you get heat illness, you'll die. That's this heat wave, a concern for families like the Kahandigs, who have a disabled daughter who needs power to survive. For that reason, they're prepared with a generator in case of emergency. They pull the power off, we're okay. Juan teaching preparedness, saying he doesn't expect these blackout threats to go away anytime soon. The grid can take so much. Our neighbors can't give us electricity, so what's going to happen if you don't prepare for it? Uh, you're going to have problems. Hey, good to be prepared, Heather. Thank you. And that flex alert is still active all the way until Monday night. Cal ISO asking people to be aware of how much power you're using throughout the weekend. And PG&E says power may be shut off to 17 counties across the state as soon as Labor Day because of wildfire risk. Now, those counties include Amador, Butte, El Dorado, Calaveras, Nevada, Napa, Placer, Plumas, Sonoma, Yuba, and Tuolumne counties.
And people trying to escape the heat were all over Sacramento's rivers today, keeping cool in the water on the first day of this heat surge we've been talking about. Now, for some, it was also an opportunity to enjoy the last days of summer. We know how to stay cool and be safe, so we're not worried about it. I love the heat. Well, this is a Labor Day weekend like no other before it. The pandemic is triggering concerns of a potential surge in cases if Americans don't stick to safety guidelines. Sacramento and Stanislaus counties alone each saw more than 200 cases today. Here's more now from CBS 13's Michael George. It's a holiday weekend with a warning from America's governors. To make smart choices when it comes to COVID-19. Please be very mindful of the fact that our last surge started on Memorial Day weekend. Unfortunately, some let their guard down during these times. Dr. Anthony Fauci has put seven states on notice. North and South Dakota, Iowa, Missouri, Arkansas, Illinois, and Indiana. All with spikes in infection rates. 50,000 more Americans tested positive on Friday alone. Hopefully, people, particularly the younger people, will pay attention to things like wearing a mask, avoiding close contact, uh, avoiding crowds. And an atypical Labor Day weekend of college football is underway, with a scaled back slate of games along with attendance due to COVID precautions. Texas State is allowing just 25% capacity in its 30,000 seat stadium. Jeremiah Heidel is a wide receiver. It's going to be it's going to be different, but at the end of the day, it's a football game, and we out here to play football. What COVID wants more than anything else, which is familiarization, close contact, hugging, singing, joy, <laughs> to some extent. Boston's Northeastern University suspended 11 freshman students who were caught partying off campus in violation of school policy. Well, within a week of getting here, they broke the rules and. Those are the consequences. Yeah, hopefully people will heed those warnings this weekend. Meanwhile, the CDC is asking state governments to prepare to distribute a vaccine as early as late October. But two Trump administration officials now say that may be an ambitious deadline. Well, not a fire watch on this Saturday. Helicopter crews rescuing campers told to shelter in place at the Mammoth Pool Reservoir in Madera County. This after the Creek Fire burned the only road to safety here. The sheriff's office says 10 people in total were hurt. Now, the fire has consumed 36,000 acres so far. The El Dorado Hills Fire Department is sending four crews out to help battle the flames there. And across the state tonight, there's concern for campers this Labor Day weekend. With many campsites at full capacity, firefighters say they're worried about a surge in illegal campfires and that, coupled with this dry, blistering heat, could set off more wildfires. A year ago, about this time, that was 189 campfires. This year, that's 700 that we've documented so far. And Southern California firefighters are battling a new fire today. The El Dorado fire exploded to more than 1,500 acres just east of San Bernardino. Residents there were evacuated. There are no reports at this point of anybody hurt. And crews are still battling Northern California wildfires in our area, but leaders say first responders are getting closer to containing the biggest ones here at home. The LNU Lightning Complex fires have burned more than 37... 375,000 acres. They're 89% contained. And in the South Bay, the SCU Lightning Complex fires have burned almost 400,000 acres and now are 88% contained. The Claremont Fire in Plumas County burned more than 24,000 acres and is now at 51% containment. And now the number of homes destroyed in Solano County from the LNU complex fire passing the 300 mark. We know another 60 were damaged as well. Well, not of this, some tense moments in Lodi this morning between protesters calling to defund the police and a group of pro-Trump demonstrators. Now, this got heated when members from both groups confronted each other and started yelling. You can see law enforcement officers here eventually forming a line between the two sides. Despite the tense moments, no one was hurt. Now, protests have swept the nation since the police killing of George Floyd in Minneapolis on Memorial Day. Those demonstrators are now in their fourth month this Labor Day weekend. CBS 13's Michael George has the latest on this now from New York. I'm not against you. 
Automatic protesters squared off in the streets of Louisville as the 146 Kentucky Derby ran nearby at Churchill Downs. Demonstrators demanding justice in the police shooting death of Breonna Taylor exchanged words with a group referring to themselves as the Patriots, some of them armed. We're not racist because we love this country. We're not racist because we love that flag, support our police officers. Everybody's pointing the finger at each other, and that could be dangerous. <laughs> In Portland, Oregon, police prepared for the 100th night of consecutive protests. I understand that they're tired, but at the same time, we're tired of you killing black people. Police say rocks were thrown at them on Friday night, and they declared an unlawful assembly, arresting more than two dozen people. They declare us an unlawful assembly slash riot, like, all the time just for standing here. Protesters marched through the streets to a police building. Police say some chanted, burn it down. In Rochester, New York, What's his name? Daniel the death of Daniel Prude sparked a third night of protests, this time marked by fireworks, sporadic clashes with police, and the apparent use of tear gas and pepper spray. <laughs> Footage released earlier this week showed Prude's fatal encounter with officers back in March when they put a spit hood over his head and shoved his face into the ground. Prude stopped breathing and was later taken off life support. Friday, Rochester police also declared an unlawful assembly and ordered the crowd to disperse. And here in Sacramento, there are more calls to defund Sacramento police. Next Tuesday, city leaders will be talking about a proposal to move $15 million in funding, some of which, which goes to both Sacramento police and fire departments. Sacramento has already agreed to overhaul its 911 system, sending some non-criminal calls away from police. And supporters of President Trump took to the water to hold another boat parade on the Sacramento River today. The event was hosted by the Patriot Network and California Delta Magazine. The parade here started at the Tower Bridge, went past Old, uh, Old Sacramento, rather, to the Virgin Sturgeon, and then over to the American River. The Trump administration tonight is being told it must stop winding down in-person counting efforts for the 2020 census. A federal judge is issuing a temporary restraining order. All of this while a legal fight continues over the administration's short schedule for the national headcount. Challengers are concerned the bureau will undercount people, especially people of color and immigrants. And after weeks of not knowing what distance learning may look like, Sac City Unified has put out their distance learning plan for the school year. The district says in order to meet the academic, social, and emotional success of its students, they're now moving forward with a full virtual learning plan without an agreement with the Sacramento City Teachers Association. The new plan is set to start on Tuesday. A lot to get to tonight, all new at 10. The EDD faces an audit for sending letters to empty homes. How it's costing dozens of people their benefits and taxpayers millions. And an American River Rescue caught on camera. The warning from the sheriff's office if you plan to head out to the water this weekend. And two fishermen out for a casual day on the Sacramento River required more than muscle to reel in their lines. Why they needed the bomb squad to suit up. And a Stockton man told he wouldn't make it makes a miracle recovery from COVID-19. His emotional story after the break.
Welcome back, everyone. Crews continue to battle a fire on an oil tanker carrying over 2 million barrels of oil off the coast of Sri Lanka. The fire here has been burning since Thursday. Four tugboats, three Sri Lankan Navy ships, and four Indian ships have been battling this fire. Of the 23 crew members, one has died and one has been injured. Leaders there say the fire is considered to be under control. Well, new video shows the Placer County Sheriff's Office rescuing a woman on the American River. They responded to the Middle Fork just before 2.30 on Wednesday afternoon. A woman was swept away by the current and then ended up stranded on a rock in Murderer's Bar. The dive team pulled her to safety. And they want to remind people that the river swells around midday. And to be careful, you could go for a swim this holiday weekend. A CHP helicopter saves two hikers just in the nick of time. And this rescue happened near Round Lake in El Dorado County on Thursday after one of those hikers called 911 for a medical emergency. A paramedic rushed in to help before they were flown to South Lake Tahoe Airport. An ambulance met them there and continued treatment. We're told that the hiker is now recovering. Well, you never know what you might snag out of the Sacramento River. But as CBS 13's Adrian Moore shows us tonight, what two fishermen recently hooked didn't require muscle. It needed the bomb squad. We've caught, you know, like lawn chairs and, you know, stuff, stuff like that. But John Kenyon's most recent catch wasn't just unusual. It was downright dangerous. My father-in-law had the net ready and we got it up towards the boat and we thought it was like an anchor. My, my father-in-law was like, it's a bomb. And he's like, get everyone get to the front of the boat. As the avid angler called the sheriff's office, suddenly another fisherman called out near the mouth of Battle Creek with a claim that seemed, well, a little fishy. He yelled at me, John, we just hooked another bomb. The Shasta County Bomb Squad was called in, confirming what was reeled in were in fact two live homemade pipe bombs. Kenyon calls it a floundering attempt by other fishermen to cut corners. I think that they're probably trying to blow up salmon and knocking them out and having them float up and then taking them. A potentially explosive situation foiled along the Sacramento River, serving as a reminder to be wary of what you hook because you never know what's waiting below the surface. Well, both pipe bombs were detonated at the scene and thankfully no one was hurt. It's not clear if any other devices may still be in the water. So be on the lookout for that if you're heading to the water this coming weekend. But also be on the lookout for these record breaking temperatures we've been talking about and be prepared. Jordan, you've been tracking the brutal heat this weekend. Oh, yes. And you know, like you mentioned, the water has been the place where folks are trying to cool down. And speaking of the water, we've been getting some great photos sent in by our CBS 13 viewers. This one sent in by Christine out of Nimbus Flat. You can see a beautiful uh, sunset in this photo. Now, if you have a picture that you take over the Labor Day weekend, you can always upload it to our website, CBS 13. Just head over to the weather page and we'd love to see your photos. Let's uh, take a look though as outside as we get into the overnight hours. A pretty quiet but warm evening tonight here in downtown Sacramento. As we take a look at the numbers that we've seen for today, we got up to 101 here in Sacramento, 105 down in Stockton. Modesto came in at 101 as well. And we did have a nice delta breeze Friday night. So this morning, temperatures did cool off into the low 60s for many locations. Unfortunately, that will not be the case tonight as temperatures are expected to get only down into the mid 70s for some locations. Let's take a look at our current temperatures at the moment. Right now, 81 degrees here in Sacramento, 78 out towards Vacaville. And we've got mid 80s right now out towards the northern San Joaquin Valley. Valley, low to mid 80s in the foothills and a warm 66 degrees for both Truckee as well as South Lake Tahoe and upper 70s right now out towards San Francisco. So a big jump in our temperatures anywhere from 16 degrees warmer out towards the Bay Area to about five degrees warmer here in the valley. Nine degrees warmer right now up in Grass Valley. So this heat wave is definitely here with us and unfortunately we only be getting warmer as we head into Sunday. As we speak again with those overnight temperatures, we're looking at low 70s to upper 70s for much of the valley. We could even get up to 80 degrees tonight out in Grass Valley, then mid to upper 40s expected up in the high country. As far as air quality, now we did see a few days this week that air was actually improving in the Sacramento area. Unfortunately, we've got air quality now 
unfortunately getting down. So we've got oranges and yellows indicating uh, some moderate numbers there, even some reds here. And this is because of that creek fire that has been burning. As we take a look at this next graphic here, this is posted by the National Weather Service out in Reno. And you can see the fire right here and the smoke from that fire pushing into the valley. So we will see more of that smoke impacting our skies tomorrow as well. Heading into our satellite and weather tracker, we lose that delta breeze and that onshore flow. We could see some activity popping up along uh, portions of the high country, but otherwise mostly dry conditions and temperatures again expected to warm up tomorrow. We're going to see it really peaking high and winds again. They'll be light and variable through much of our day today. As we take a look at our future cast winds will be trending a bit from a northerly direction by Monday, though. This is something we're going to be adding to our forecast. We're expecting winds to really pick up. We're going to see wind shift from the west to northwest direction, and that's going to help to pick up that fire weather watch that will be in place because of all that dry brush and the winds turning from the north. We could see more fires start very quickly and spread rapidly. So in addition to the heat, now we'll be tracking some fire weather watches on Monday. Tomorrow's forecast, though, here we go. Low 90s for the Bay Area, 110 forecast for the Delta, not towards Fairfield. 111 in the Valley, we'll see 105 into the foothills. And 97 degrees expected for the greater Lake Tahoe area. So we are going to see record breaking heat on our Sunday. It's going to be a hot one, folks. So be very careful if you spend time outdoors, drink plenty of water, and don't forget that sunscreen. Marissa, back yeah. to you. Stay hydrated, Jordan. Thank you so much. You're coming up at 10 tonight. A vaccine by November? Well, don't count on it. There is a very, very low chance that uh, the trials that are running as we speak could read before the end of October. We'll talk about the timeline for when a COVID-19 vaccine could be on the market. Plus, could Lyft be leaving California? What the company says the state needs to do for it to stay in business here. And at this rate, we'll be getting our Amazon packages before we order them. The company's latest step towards launching drone delivery. Stay with us.
The Lyft says it could leave California if it's forced to reclassify drivers as employees. The CEO submitted the sworn statement to court after Attorney General Javier Becerra charged Lyft and Uber with violating California's new gig work law. Now, the statement outlines their plans to comply with the injunction to reclassify its drivers should their appeal fail. The company is also relying on a ballot measure that would exempt them from employing drivers. And Amazon says it's gotten approval from the Federal Aviation Administration to start testing drone deliveries. Amazon is only the third delivery company to receive drone certification from the FAA. The company says it plans to use drones to make deliveries in 30 minutes or less. Speedy. Many Americans plan to labor this Labor Day. Vacation rental engine home to go says 46% of people it surveyed are planning an overnight getaway for the three day weekend, but 74% of them plan to use some of that time to work remotely or even attend online classes. Now to this, some Michigan boy is spending the holiday weekend with his perfect match. The two year old bonded instantly with his new dog after learning they both have cleft palates. Pure happiness at the Jackson County Animal Shelter. Two year old Bentley Boyers got to bring his new puppy home. Bentley's dad, Brandon, came to the animal shelter to look at two chickens he was thinking to adopt when a pooch caught his eye, a puppy with a cleft lip. FaceTime, he goes, I think this one has a cleft lip, and I said, get her. We need her. Bentley was born with a cleft lip. His mom said he had a tough start to life and feels finding the puppy will show Bentley he isn't alone. To see him have something in common with a puppy means a lot because he can grow up and understand that him and his puppy have both had something that they can share in common. The animal shelter says they don't see that she'll have any problems in the future. Her disability is really not holding her back. She might look a little bit different than a normal dog would, but it's not slowing her down at all. At just two months and two years, the imperfect super duo finds a perfect match. Absolutely looking adorable together. Certainly the perfect match. Coming up next at 10 tonight, a Stockton man who says he was near death makes a miracle recovery from COVID-19. What he credits to saving his life. And are you still waiting on an unemployment check? Why state leaders are demanding an emergency audit from the EDD. And the lightning fires weren't just a test for firefighters. The challenge of getting help to victims from a safe distance.